representing a patient. Um, we have a third presentation, uh, a Charles Calvo. Uh, he's a fourth year medical student from the University of Nevada, Reno, and what we'll be uh, presenting. And finally, if there's any time for Candon, uh, he can present diagnostic confusion. If not, we have a whole year next year that he can present uh, diagnostic confusion. So today I'm going to be discussing uh, corneal scar etiology and management uh, with a patient who's actually upstairs in the triage area right now. Um, so his, his history, he's an 88-year-old male with tumor history, decreased vision in his right eye. There's no pain associated with it. Uh, his history is only significant for cataract surgery 10 years ago in both eyes. Doesn't take any medications currently. Uh, on physical exam, initially two weeks ago here, his uh, visual acuity was 2200 in the right eye, 2025 in the left eye. Interocular pressure was 16, his pupils were normal. Uh, there was no fluorescein, staining seen, and uh, nor he had a normal fundus. Pictures were taken when he was seen initially here two weeks ago. And uh, as you can see here, there's some corneal haze uh, with scar in the epithelium and anterior stroma. There's also, you can kind of see it's a little difficult, but there's some neovascularization in the cornea. So a uh, working differential was, was started. Uh, he was actually referred here from St. George by an ophthalmologist down there for uh, treatment for suspected conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia. Um, that was part of the differential along with chemical burn and limbal stem cell deficiency. Uh, right here on the left, we have a, a picture I found on the internet of characteristic uh, CIN uh, with corneal involvement. And then our patient's in the middle here. And then I, uh, I, I found a paper that had discussed uh, treatment of limbal stem cell deficiency secondary to mustard gas exposure in the Iran-Iraq war. And so this patient had a partial limbal stem cell deficiency with, uh, with a corneal scar. Um, impression cytology was done on this patient because there was questions as to whether he really had CIN. Um, and he, there was an H&E stain done and he was looked at under light microscopy. And uh, as you can see here, there's fairly uh, normal epithelium, uh, non-squamous, I mean squamous, non-keratinized in appearance with uh, normal nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. There's no mitotic figures and no chromatin clumping. The official, the official um, final diagnosis on this impression cytology was corneal impression cytology showing no signs of dysplasia. Um, so with that in mind, I wanna discuss these three differentials and their patho pathophysiology diagnosis and management. So uh, chemical burns, you want to look for a history of exposure. After he had been worked out, the patient mentioned that he spent his life as a cattle rancher and he'd been exposed to lots of chemicals, although he's been retired for a long time and he hasn't had any, he didn't think he got anything in his eyes recently. Um, limbal stem cell deficiency can actually be secondary to, to chemical burns. Um, essentially, you have a defect in the limbal stem cells and so you, there's difficulty repopulating normal cor corneal epithelium. Um, and characteristically, you'll get inflammation and you'll get conjunctival cells growing into the epithelium. Um, CIN is dysplasia with abnormal maturation of a corneal conjunctival epithelium. And generally, patients have a history of uh, excessive UV exposure, smoking, um, HIV also. So how do you diagnose chemical burns? Uh, you need to know if there's a history or not. Um, Limbal stem cell deficiency, a lot of times the diagnosis can be made clinically uh, through their past medical history. Do they have some kind of autoimmune disease like Steven Johnson syndrome um, or aniridia? Um, and if, if there's a diagnosis in question, you can go to a histological exam with impression cytology. Um, and generally, you'll see conjunctival goblet cells in the cornea, um, which was not present on our patient's impression cytology. CIN, initially, you can use rose bangal staining. Um, which you, you can see punctate lesions. Um, and histopathology can also be done with impression cytology. Um, and you'll normally see dysplasia, um, unusual thickened epithelial cells. If you do see it, you can grade it with a biopsy. And uh, CIN1 is uh, dysplasia located in the lower third of the conjunctival epithelial thickness. CIN2 is in the middle third of the conjunctival epithelial thickness and the CIN3 is uh, in the upper third of the conjunctival epithelial thickness. Carcinoma situ is a full thickness lesion in the invasive squamous cell and leads to the basement membrane. 
so what's the management, chemical uh, burn management? You want to promptly irrigate the, the wound. Um, also too, if there's, if there's history of an alkaline agent exposure, you want to monitor intraocular pressure because alkaline agents can cause an inflammatory reaction and precipitate acute, acute glaucoma. Um, surgically, I found some research that suggested that amniotic membrane transplantation can decrease inflammation and promote epithelial healing. <clears throat> and like I mentioned earlier, you can also get uh, limbal stem cell deficiency. And so uh, a limbal stem cell transplant has also been used to help um, promote healing of the cornea. And this patient right here was from a, was from a study that took actually, um, this patient actually had limbal stem cell transplant and an amniotic membrane transplant. He had a burn, a uh, sulfuric acid burn, and this was, this was, this picture was taken a month and a half after his surgery and shows a stable ocular surface. Uh, medical management of uh, limbal stem cell deficiency can be done with scleral lenses. Uh, I, I found a study where a patient had uh, a, di a limbal stem cell deficiency secondary to contact lens wear, and they used scleral lenses for nine months and his uh, cornea re-epithelialized and he had no pain or discomfort after that. Also conservative management with artificial tears and topical steroids. Uh, for more dis severe disease, like in autoimmune cases where you have bilateral um, limbal stem cell deficiencies, you can use a carotid limbal allograft from a donor. Um, and also you can, if, if the patient just has a unilateral uh, defect from something like an alkali burn, you can uh, do a conjunctival, conjunctival limbal autograft from the patient's good eye. And then CIN management uh, found a few papers that discussed anti the anti-cancer agents, mitomycin C5, fluorouracil, and interferon alpha 2b. Um, and this patient up here actually was treated for several months with interferon alpha 2b uh, for, for CIN in the cornea. And after, after about 18 months of treatment, you can see on the, on the right side that the patient's wound is completely healed. And um, the patient did not have any recurrence during the, the study's time, which was about three years. Surgically, uh, neoplasm confined to the cornea can simply be peeled off the basement membrane as long as it's uh, confined to the epithelium. Whereas uh, if there is uh, neoplasm in the conjunctiva, surgical resection can be done with cryotherapy. Um, and I found a study that, that used that and uh, it prevented the reoccurrence uh, after about three years of follow-up um, of CIN in conjunctiva. So our patient, he, uh, he was sent home two weeks ago with really conservative management, erythromycin ointment, artificial tears, uh, steroids four times a day. And, and um, so as I finish this, I'd like to open it up to everyone who's seen the patient to discuss management options or ideas on the differential of this patient.
he just started noticing it two months ago. Um, he's had some vision problems, uh, muscle weakness, and so he had prisms. And he started knowing that, noticing that his double vision was getting better, and so he realized that his right eye was just blurry. And so they were really excited. He has, he has follow-up care today, and I, I think I, Dr. Embody was discussing doing a, a graph from his other eye when this, when this uh, went off. 